Well, I've been singing this metal monthly song for too long. I've been singing this metal monthly song for too long. I've been singing about new metal. I've been singing about no new metal. When I started this gag doing an improvised song before the first couple of episodes, I didn't think that I'd have to then improvise a song for a number of years. Howdy, banger pals. Blaine Smith welcoming you to another Metal Monthly Bangers Monthly look at what's coming out in metal releases. Hey, if you're new here, first of all, thanks for stopping by the show. I appreciate that. Let me tell you how things work. The way it works is I find you the five best underground metal albums coming out every single month that you might not have heard of. But before we get to my picks, we also have a calendar where we list some of the big or just noteworthy new releases coming out so you can plan your Bandcamp Fridays, you can strategize your limited edition vinyls, whatever you got to do. Here's some albums you might want to keep an eye out for. Up first on April 5th, Iron Monkey are releasing Spleen and Goad on Relapse. Corp Lacani are releasing Ran Karumpu on Nuclear Blast. Modern Death Metal Gods Witch Vomit are back with Funeral Sanctum on 20 Bucks Spin. April 12th, you've got Blue Oyster Cult releasing Ghost Stories on Frontiers. Metal Monthly alumni Heavy Temple are releasing Garden of Heathens on Magnetic Eye. More Modern Death Metal Gods in Necrot releasing Lifeless Birth on Tank Crimes. Tear are releasing Battle Ballads on Metal Blade and more Metal Monthly alumni. Vulture is releasing Sentinels on Metal Blade. April 19th, ooh, big week, especially because it starts with maybe my most anticipated album for the year, potentially even yours. Antichrist Siege Machine are releasing Vengeance of Eternal Fire on Profound Lore. Ooh, boy, I'm excited for it. Oh, big Brave are also releasing A Chaos of Flowers on Thrill Jockey. High on Fire are releasing Cometh the Storm on MNRK. The Melvins are releasing Tarantula Heart on Ipecac. My Dying Bride are releasing Immortal Binding on Nuclear Blast. And Pearl Jam are back with Dark Matter on Monkey Ranch. That is all one week, and I'm not even listing everything big coming out that week. Holy crap. April 26th, you've got Accept releasing Humanoid on Napalm. You've got Black Tusk releasing The Way Forward on Season of Mist. You've got ah, Dark Throne. Sorry. Uh, Dark Throne are releasing It Beckons Us All on Peaceville. And Inter Arma are releasing New Heaven on Relapse. So that's it for the big list. Let's get on to my five picks for the best of the underground. Up first, we've got Castle Rat with Into the Realm on King Volume Records coming out April 12th. Great music with a great music video to kick things off. Hell yeah, that's the way we do it. a New York Doom band with a great photo album cover by Ronnie Lanziota. Absolutely nailed it. That's on some really nice merch, too. So this is a full performance type of metal band. There's a member who doesn't even play anything. She's just part of the general vibe, man. And that vibe is just a chemist album cover come to life. Holy hell. Riley Pinkerton looks like she just fell right out of one of them and has a voice that's just absolutely tailor-made for this style. And she creates a great storytelling structure on top of that with her lyrics pairs perfectly well with the stripped back doom where just everything has to sound great because there's nothing to hide behind it gets you into a head naughty vibe with a lot of kind of just slow atmosphere before blap kicking you with a bit of high energy and just a super rich lush sound i'm so happy the content lives up to the aesthetic because the aesthetic is perfect and you know me, I love a full package metal band. Metal is an aesthetic genre as much as it is a sonic one. When a band puts it all together, it's just a magical thing that kind of brought us into metal. So hell yeah, another band doing it right. Hey, look at that. Starting off a little less extreme, but of course now we're just into black metal. Hexelblad, Caremoran, Hypnotic Dirge Records, April 19th. This is some Michigan slash Massachusetts slash fucking tongue twister black metal. Holy hell, move somewhere different. 
Oh, we've got the classic purple black metal castle artwork by Aggie R. Paracasuma. I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, I tried. Anyways, full disclosure, this record is made by a pal of mine. So, yes, nepotism is alive and well here. But, friend or not, I'm sure if you heard that there's a Witcher-themed black metal band releasing an album on Hypnotic Dirge Records, you'd go, yeah, Blaine's probably going to listen to that. Inside, though, we get a unique black metal project that bridges two worlds of the genre. Oh, boy. It's part black metal with symphonics and a bunch of nonsense going on with it. Kind of big production-y, big budget-y stuff. But because it's made by two broke kids, it's got an underground black metal sound to the whole thing that normally doesn't come along with a style like this, which means we've got symphonics and nonsense that aren't so overpowering they can make me sick and I can just listen to them and enjoy them. Hey, what a treat. So this makes it a rare record that stands out in a... Let's be honest, overcrowded genre that's getting real culture vultury these days. Yes, I saw the commercial. Yes, I roll. Yes, comedy is hard. Let's flip back from conventional Blaine pick to unconventional housed negative music on Feistic formats coming out April 19th. Norwegian metal punks who created a great simple but striking album cover and I don't know if this technically counts as metal but it's damn good and real special so however they got into metal archives I salute it and they go in my show because on the instrumental side of things yeah this is high energy Nordic punk catchy as hell love the style but vocally is where things get weird this guy whose name I'm not even gonna take a crack at just you tell me what I'm supposed to do with that regardless of how you spell it he's phenomenal his style reminds me of gone too soon metal act sacred monster and might completely fill the hole they left in my heart and in a way that i don't think is going to be recalled in 10 years and i'm going to find out when watching late night tv and get involved in a class action lawsuit he's strained he's manic he's throwing his r's all over the place and when you combine that with the addictive sounds of quality norwegian punk you get a record that just gets me cranked as hell in the way that first kvelertek record did so that's another strong band to be compared to so if you're a fan of those two acts, this is a 100% I guarantee buy. This has got to be one of the hardest metal monthly months to narrow down to five records in the time I've been doing this show. So many great albums, and at this point, so many of them are from metal monthly alumni. I listed a bunch of them off the top, wearing the Morgul Blade shirt to represent, but I had to feature Tombstoner once again. Rot Stink Rip coming out on Redefining Darkness April 26th. boys from Staten Island are back with their unique blend of death metal. We've got a hilarious album cover by Tyler Pennington letting you know what they're about. You nailed it, dude. And yes, I've featured these goons before, but I'm doing so once again because, once again, they have upheld their end of the bargain, which is to combine death metal and hardcore and not have it become deathcore. How do they do it? Nobody knows. Uh, we were actually talking on my stream because, as a reminder, I do stream twitch.tv slash metal comedy. All the research for this show happens live on Twitch Sundays, 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Hear every metal album coming out one month in the future. Woo, crystal ball. But yeah, what do we call this? Is this crossover death? It's not deathcore. Deathcore is taken. So do you like crossover death? Do you have a term? Let me know in the comments below. We'll get a movement going. We'll be the change we want to see in the world or whatever. I don't know. Anyways, back to my review. The, the, the record is what happens when you get an absolute group of knuckle draggers and then just fill them to the brim with talent at the same time. It's so consistently inventive and technical, but with the desire to make unique, challenging music, always being balanced by just a fast, catchy ripper of a track. And that's from everyone involved, too. I can't count how many times the drums stole my attention. 
everybody nails their performance, especially Thomas and Jesse's dual vocals, which can go proper death metal whenever they want. But for the majority of the time, they're just giving pissed off hardcore vocalist in the best way. This is the definitive guide on how you combine hardcore and death metal and have it not be absolute trash. Yeah, last month I was coming for NASCAR fans. This month I'm coming for you, deathcore fans. Nobody's safe. Burn it all to the ground. Woo. Speaking of having a hard time whittling down what records to go in here, until pretty much game time, I was bouncing back and forth between two records for the palate cleanse slot. I couldn't decide. They're both fantastic and different. I like them both evenly. So how did I decide? Well, one of them you can currently buy on Bandcamp. One of them you can't. So that made the decision. If you can buy a record on Bandcamp, I'm going to send you there because I want to make money for bands. That's kind of the goal of the show. So sorry, but if you want to find out who that other band was, woo, you can head on over to Patreon, toss us a couple bucks. I'm making a new video there every single week. You get bonus content, and those videos are all edited by me as well. So you get Blaine's unique brand of comedy also expressed through Adobe Premiere skills that he is struggling to learn. But without further ado, we are at our palette cleanse of the month it's tarot glimpse of dawn on cruise del sur music april 12th playing us out they're not actually playing us out they'll come back after they play so i can talk about them This is an Australian 70s inspired rock band. And look at that wild cover by Lena Richter. Holy hell, I'm in love. That thing's perfect. Anyways, the promo for this record describes it as Hammond B3 organ hard rock for a new generation. And boy, the organs and keys make a great foundation for this band to both sound fantastic and stand out from a good chunk of the other 70s revival bands popping off right now. It's just one of those sounds that feels great in your ear no matter what they're playing. I swear they could just be plinking the same key. Bunk, 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 but that's not what they do. What I am most thankful for on the record, though, is the band resists the kind of energy vacuum that can form in the middle of records like this when a lot of bands go with like a high energy lead single, but then I just find the rest of the album to be a total plod. The overall BPM on this record stays high, and even when they slow it down, they still perform with like a ton of force and passion, so I don't even notice that we've let off the gas a bit. The result is a record that gives me that full chest feeling that only comes from this style for all 41 minutes of its runtime. Thank you so much. What a great way to close out a strong month. And what the hell are you doing this month? Holy hell. It's a lot of records. There's a lot of records coming out. What are you buying? What are you looking forward to? What are you getting? Are you going to financially survive this? Let me know in the comments below.